Greg in Chicago, who is one team not being talked about enough when it comes to being a potential sleeper in 2024? Let me ask you guys something. Do you know who is the number one team in returning production this year? Can anybody tell me? Anybody? Well, it's Iowa State, but the team that I'm actually going to be speaking of is the one that currently had the most returning production before the second wave of the transfer portal. That is Virginia Tech. I'm not sure how many people are watching this video that are under the age of maybe like 22, but there was a point in time where there was a coach by the name of Frank Beamer. You maybe heard of his son. He's currently working at South Carolina right now, where he led Virginia Tech to sheer dominance. They were one of the most complete teams in college football every single year. They were great defensively. They had one of the best coordinators in Bud Foster. They were a fantastic program when it came to recruiting. And even though they weren't at a major program and they weren't, I mean, they weren't a major conference, they always put up major numbers in games. They went to a national championship with Michael Vick as their starting quarterback. They were always finding themselves inside the top 10 rankings. And this was a program that when you look at how they played, people feared them. They didn't care about what conference they were in or what they did the year prior. They just knew that on Saturdays, and we walked into Blacksburg, Virginia, we walked into that stadium and we heard enter Sandman. It was going to be crazy. It was never going to be just a normal game. And for a while, we finally saw it as the Justin Fuente era didn't really go according to plan. And then we saw Brent Pry in year one kind of struggle. Well, now he's built something that is very much sustainable and what really could be an intriguing team going into 2024. 84% of the production returns this upcoming season. They bring back their starting quarterback and Kyron Drones, one of the more underrated quarterbacks in all of college football this year. They also bring back their number one wide receiver. They bring back a ton of defensive talent. I think it's like 85%, if I'm not mistaken, of defensive talent going into this year. They also have a very manageable schedule. Not saying that you're not going to see some losses on there, but Vanderbilt, Marshall, Old Dominion to begin the year. Rutgers, Miami, Stanford. You feel good, I think, about two of those three matchups. Boston College, Georgia Tech, Syracuse, Clemson, Duke, Virginia to close it out. I'm not saying that when you look at Virginia Tech, they should be a playoff contender. I'm not saying that they should be an ACC contender. But we've seen before, look at Missouri last year. This is a perfect example. Missouri last season went on a tyrant raid because of how much returning production they had. I think it was like 82% of their team came back for 2023. And they went and they won the Cotton Bowl, and they held their own against Georgia. And now we talk about Missouri as a team that probably should make the college football playoff. They should be a team with their schedule, with what returns this year, headlined by Brady Cook, the burden, Theo Wees, what they have in terms of Kirby Moorback. You feel good about where Missouri is. Well, maybe that's Virginia Tech this year. They're the team that isn't ready to go ahead and be a playoff contender, especially in even a 12-team playoff where Missouri would have gone last year. But they are a team that does feel like it's over the hump. Now we're talking about nine wins. Now we're talking about potentially 10 win seasons. Now we're talking about them being alongside the Clemsons of the world, the Florida States, the Miamis, even the NC States. And they can be a roster, a program that not only holds their own in games, but you see those matchups that were one possession games and they fall apart in the fourth quarter. Well, it flips. And now instead, they're the ones closing out on top. They're the ones that currently are finding ways to keep this momentum going. They're the ones that now are saying, we're going to go nine and three. We're going to go 10 and two. We're going to be in that hunt. And it's not that far-fetched. Brent Pry is a really good coach, and he's waiting for this moment to finally arise. If you ask anybody around uh, Pe uh, State College at Penn State, they'll tell you how much they loved what a guy like Brent Pry did for this team and how he was waiting adamantly for his right job. He got the right job in Blacksburg. And I can tell you this much. If you are young enough and don't know what a Saturday night in Blacksburg looks like when this place is roaring and they actually are really good, I don't know what to tell you. Because if you know that when you look at what this team does, when they're six and seven, they still sell out the arena and the atmosphere. When you hear that, it's just fantastic. It's why you talk about one of the greatest traditions in college football. Enter Sandman has to be at the very top of it. And so I look at this team and I say to myself, if they can be like Missouri in 2023, this is going to be a very intriguing roster moving forward. They have the talent. And I do think that when you look at this team, 
maybe they won't be the reason why you're going to the college football playoff, but they'll be damn sure a reason why a team isn't going to the college football playoff. Next question.